Hi, welcome back to Cooking with Oscar on the Cooking with Daddy channel. Today, today we're heading in a new direction and we're making something other than meat because all of the videos I've made up to now have been meat centric. Today we're making salmon. We're making salmon poached in white wine, a bit of olive oil, uh, some garlic, salt and pepper, and most importantly a little bit of fresh herb. Uh, and today I'm going to be using dill. We'll talk about that in a second. I buy this salmon at Costco. It's, uh, it's pretty good. It's plentiful. Uh, it's not terribly expensive. It's farm-raised salmon, which has definitely a different taste than, uh, than wild-caught coho salmon. Uh, frankly, in my family, they prefer this salmon to the wild-caught salmon, which is, which is why we make it. I always make this, uh, this salmon, which goes in the oven, I always make it in a Pyrex or as they say in my family, Pedix, pan, uh, mostly because unlike anything out of, made out of metal, especially aluminum, I know for sure that a glass pan like this will not impart any taste to something as delicate as salmon. So I always go with this, depending on the size. This is the largest uh, Pyrex pan that I happen to have. It's about 14 inches by 10 inches, and the official size is 4.8 quarts, plenty big enough for me and this salmon. This is an exceptionally easy dish to prepare, as you will see. The ingredients are relatively few. We'll talk about them as we use them. And uh, it basically requires about 30 minutes of marinating uh, the fish in the, uh, in the ingredients that I'm going to show you now, and about 10 to 15 minutes max of cooking time in the oven. And then you let it sit. Uh, after taking it out of the oven, you let it sit for 10, 15 minutes to solidify, and then you serve it up. This dish, believe it or not, is wonderful to make the day before a big supper or a big event because it can be served at room temperature and it will be just as delicious. So let's get started. Look, just a simple splash of olive oil. I put a towel underneath it so that you can see more clearly the olive oil. Just a little bit on top, right, right in the pan, before you put the fish in. And just to move it around a bit, why, is, why am I doing this? Well, uh, in case you have, uh, you, in case your fish has skin on it, I don't believe this particular cut does, but if it has skin on it, if you put some oil in the bottom of the pan, as I am doing, it will prevent it from sticking so that when you pick up your fish, you don't leave the skin behind, if you care about the skin. I don't. Okay, <laughs> you can cut it out. I've already cut this very generously sized fillet down to a size that will fit in the pan, as you see. And I have these little left, this little leftover here, which I'm going to split in two and just tuck into the sides. There's no reason not to cook that with everything else. A little more olive oil on top, like a two or three count of extra virgin olive oil, of course. This, technically speaking, is poaching. We're going to poach this, uh, this salmon. We're going to poach it in olive oil and white wine. Now, uh, I can use white wine. I think I have some in the refrigerator and certainly have some in the wine cabinet, if not. But one of the things that I learned from Julia Child is the use of white vermouth instead of white wine. Why do I use white vermouth? Well, the beauty of white vermouth is that you can open it up, use a little bit of it, close it back up and put it in the cabinet and it won't spoil, it won't go bad. This brand is Martini and Rossi white vermouth, which you can actually buy in most supermarkets because it's, it's basically just a fortified wine. It's not a spirit like an alcohol, so you'll find it in the wine section usually. You can certainly use white wine. Um, my issue with it is that if I open a bottle of white wine, I don't want to have to drink the whole thing in a couple of days. So I like the white vermouth, and plus, I think the white vermouth actually has a bit more punch. How much? I would say for, for a filet this big, I would say maybe half a cup. Doesn't have to be much more than that. Again, you're just, you're getting enough in there in order to poach the fish. You'll see that the olive oil is in here with the white wine the white vermouth in this case. And I'm just going to take my spoon, spoon it up, uh, mix it up as I do, and put it, all of it, directly on top of 
the salmon. Next, a little freshly ground black pepper. And salt. Two more ingredients to go. One is fresh garlic, and the other, of course, is the dill, but I'll talk about that in a second. Now, with respect to the garlic, I could certainly cut it up, slice it up, um, but I like using this tool for this job. This is a garlic press. This is the best garlic press that I've ever used. It has these little red nubs here, so that after you press the garlic in here, you flip it over like this, and those red nubs push through and actually clean and help you clean out the inside of the garlic press. A couple of cloves. You see how nicely they push through. How much am I going to use? Uh, I don't know, probably a little bit more than five or six cloves, I think. Who makes this lovely little device? Uh, the company's name is OXO. I bought this one in Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't remember how much it cost because I've had it for a long time. Uh, very useful. Uh, they don't sponsor me or anything like that. I'm not opposed to that. Really, I'm not. OXO, if you're watching this, I'd, I'd be happy to be sponsored by you. Okay, now that we've got the, we've got the garlic, we're just going to spread it out a little bit. Now this is the meatier part of the salmon here, right? So you're gonna, if you're going to, you're not necessarily gonna spread this out completely evenly. You're gonna put more, probably a little bit more up here in the thicker part of the, f of the uh, salmon filet than you would down below where it's actually much thinner. This thinner part down here too, all other things being equal, is going to cook more quickly than the rest of it. Let's not forget these little baby pieces. They deserve some garlic love, too. Okay. I think that looks like a fair distribution. Now, take the spoon once again, without, hopefully without disturbing too much of the, the garlic that I've carefully spread out. I'm going to Spoon up some of the oil and vermouth or wine mixture back onto the top of this fillet. And we are actually almost ready to stop for at least a little while. There's only one more thing to do before letting this rest for 30 minutes in anticipation of cooking. Last ingredient. I'm going to use dill. You can use different types of herbs here. Uh, I like dill because it's not very uh, domineering. It has a very nice light taste to it and it won't overpower. It won't overpower the salmon. Other people, notably my sister Maria, insist that the only green herb that should accompany this is rosemary. I don't agree with her and she can't cook worth a damn. Well, did I say that out loud? <laughs> stop, stop, in case, I have to, in case I have to edit it. <laughs> I could use a different herb. I could use uh, thyme, which would also be quite nice. I could use rosemary. The problem with rosemary is, well, twofold. It's very, very strong. It's a very strong herb, and I think it would overpower the salmon, which is why I prefer not to use it. Other people like it, though, like my sister Maria. That's what she makes. When she makes this, under my very careful instruction and tutelage, uh, she uses rosemary. If you're going to use rosemary, the one thing I will say is you should dice it finely. You should chop it up very, very fine before you put it on the fish. Because if you don't, uh, if you just use the regular rosemary leaves on top, this doesn't cook long enough for those rosemary leaves to get soft. So as you eat your salmon, you're going to like crunch into hard rosemary. It's not very nice. Actually, don't use rosemary. Use thyme or dill. As we did before, we're going to spoon up gently 
gently spoon up the oil and wine or oil and vermouth mixture on top of the fish because the next step is we're going to let this sit and marinate right on the countertop room temperature don't put it back in the refrigerator uh, just let it sit and soak up this delightful mixture of of wine and olive oil get grab some of the flavor of the garlic and the dill for 30 minutes. We're going to let this marinate for 30 minutes. I'm going to put my timer on for 15 minutes though and at the 15 minute mark I'm going to turn my oven on to 425 degrees and I'm going to move the rack up close to the top in the top one-third of the oven capacity. So a 15 minute ramp up time to get the oven nice and hot because this goes into a very hot oven but for a relatively short amount of time. Okay, it's been a half an hour, and before we put this into the oven, once again, we're going to distribute some of the oil and wine to the top of this splendid piece of salmon. And then it goes into the oven, which is right now. I move the the rack to almost the top of the oven because uh, this is only going to go in for about 10 or 12 minutes and then I'm going to put it on broil for like two minutes just to get a little bit of a crust on the top I hope. So in she goes. And we'll start a timer for 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to take out the salmon. As you can see, it's already started to cook. And turn to bake up nicely. I'm going to move this tray as far up as I can move it. I think that's about it right there. And then I'm going to put this back for just about a minute. As you can see. I'm going to put it on custom broil and start. Really, all it needs is about a minute and a half. Okay, let's turn it off and let's, and let's get it out quickly before it's overdone. All right. That's looking pretty good. Now we're going to put a piece of aluminum foil loosely over the top and let it continue to poach just like that for about 10 minutes. Well, we lost the audio on this last portion of today's video. I'm tempted to blame my cameraman Ray Dobbins, but it was probably my fault. In any event, the dish came out delicious, moist. You could taste every bit of the salmon infused with the elements of garlic and white wine and olive oil. I hope you enjoyed today's program. I plan on doing more seafood dishes in the near future and I hope you'll join me. If you have any questions or comments on today's video, please don't hesitate to reach out. I look forward to seeing you in the next Cooking with Oscar.